In. Welcome back everyone, it is Monday and that can only mean one thing where MSF is concerned and that means there are a load of new events that have just gone live in game. So if you want to know how to smash these events like I am, free to play, then join me in this video. What's going on everyone, I'm BPG and welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, I make at least two Marvel Strike Force videos every single week, usually based around the events in game. However, sometimes I do get a chance to add a few more videos in. So if you find the content in this video helpful, please do consider giving it a like, subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you know when I upload any other content. And if you're new around here or not, please do leave a comment down below. I love to hear from you all and I do love to interact with you all in the community. So before we get into the events, I want to go over something that could have gone out earlier on the channel, but I wanted to cover it here because it's not good to release more than one video per day on YouTube. Uh, YouTube doesn't really like it. So we have a blog out called Raid on Orcus. Basically, the key points for this, there are two unique maps. One map has 51 nodes. The other one has 71 nodes. That is a normal mode and an Omega mode. Um, both of them have a difficulty slider. However, it is only Omega mode that has first time rewards. So do pay attention to that. It is still an origin based raid. So you still need a bio team, a skill team, a tech team, a mystic team and a mutant team. I know there was some. Some out there that were thinking that we might not get an origin based raid, but this is an origin based raid. And. Judging by the, uh, you know, by the picture there, you can see that we are going to be getting sentinels in the game. Just said there are four difficulties. So there's a base difficulty and there are three more difficulties. These difficulties are locked by ISO 8 um, difficulty. The, the, the space difficulty, all you need is the mission traded teams. So that is a bio team, a skill team, a tech team, a mutant team and a mystic team to go into the nodes. Difficulty one is locked behind blue ISO level three. Difficulty two is locked behind blue ISO level four. And difficulty five is locked behind blue ISO level five. Oh, sorry, difficulty three is locked behind blue ISO level five. Now there are combat modifiers. These combat modifiers only work for the new um, teams. So that is Extreme X-Men, Hive Mind, Spider Society, Orcus, uh, which is the new tech team, most likely, and Night Stalkers, which is most likely to be the new Mystic team. Now Night Stalkers, is the team that we did a lot of fan voting on the website for. So that is the team that we think includes Karen Page, a man thing, and the rework to Moon Knight that was all voted on. So we will see that no doubt in the coming months. But these combat modifiers increase the base stats of the teams and gives them barrier, but it does not give them extra health based stat. And this is to make lower starred teams be able to do the Orcus raids. And the rewards that we are going to be getting from Orcus seem to be similar to what we are getting in Incursion 2.0 currently or 2.3 currently. Um, I'm sure they will be increased from what we are getting already to try and make us go into this raid. Now, when we're talking about these combat modifiers, it makes me a little bit worried that the fact that we might not be getting as higher star rated teams going forwards on the initial sort of, you know, free to play release, possibly. And as I've said, first time rewards are only available on the Omega difficulty. Now, here is the Orcus map and you will see that there are there should be two start points. It doesn't show the other start point, but one to the left there and one to the right. Um, if you go on the left hand lane, you are going to be hitting mutant first. If you go on the right hand lane, you're going to be hitting skill first. But here is my worry. My big, big worry. We have 
Bifrost and Pegasus, which are on their way out the door. There is no point in building these teams any bigger. And we are automatically hit with a tech section and a mystic section, and then a mystic section and a tech section in both lanes before we get to do the bio and mutant or the skill and bio sections of the raids either side. This worries me intensely. We will obviously be able to complete 10% of the raid, but with the you know with your spider society society and your extreme x-men teams but that'll be as far as some people will be able to go in this raid and then you've got to weigh up the question is this raid worth doing or is it better to stick on 2.3 until you can you know get the new teams which won't be until most likely with the release schedule we've got now we've got obviously annihilators in august um so these teams we're not going to see till september october really if you look at the release schedule timeline as we're looking now anyway let me know in the comments down below what you think of the orcus raids now on to the stuff you know me for the events so summer nights this is the month long and how are we doing or how should we have been doing well on friday i told you all that if you follow my advice, you should be on 620,680 points, which will put you at milestone 34. And to show you that all that math works, there we go. 620,680 milestone 34, nearly milestone 35. And that is from my account today. And we roll into the final week of summer nights. And the first event is our solo event, Diamond Claws. This has already kicked off and lasts for seven days. So we'll finish on the 19th of August at 2 p.m. EDT or 10 p.m. BST if you are like me in the UK. It has an associated web milestone called Ancient Gems. There is a bit of a wrong uh, wording on the website on, on the website. Under the description of Ancient Gems, it, it says to earn Blitz credits, but when you press the scoring, it is Blitz Battles, and I'm pretty sure it is Blitz Battles because that is what was written in the blog as well. We've also got a Alliance event, um, Isotope Illumination. This is a six-day event, so it is already kicked off as well at time of recording. It is going to finish on the 18th of August at 2 p.m. PDT or 10 p.m. BST if you're like me in the UK. And this week's quick rumble is Infinity Command. It is going to start on Friday, the 16th of August at 2 p.m. PDT or 10 p.m. BST and run till Sunday, the 18th of August at 2 p.m. PDT or 10 p.m. BST. And this week you are going to get extra points for winning with a Black Order. So if you haven't got your Black Order up in star levels um, or able to win, then it's just going to take you a few more blitz rotations, that's all really. And we are going to cover Isotope Illumination first. This is the Alliance event. I've had to do this table manually because the table that was in the blog on Friday and the table that we were supplied as envoys was incorrect and has been changed. Um, and that might have something to do with the fact that I brought up that the original table was incompletable so you will now see that all the disco ball currency finishes at milestone 13 at 153,000 points so that is what we are aiming for um anything else if you get that as an alliance is all a bonus but the, the disco balls are what matter for the month-long event to get those points you are going to have to be spending iso 8 energy right off the back of an isotope 8 event that we've just had and the allied supply six orb fragments the reasonable total free to play however is two hundred and eight thousand eight hundred. that is quite easy that will get you to milestone 15 and your to-do list for this event is to spend your daily ISO 8 energy. That is correct. You do not have to do any coring for this event at all. So do not feel like you have to core for this event. In fact, by coring for this event, you're not really going to get much further than Milestone 16. And collect your daily free claim. So there's our ISO 8 energy. We get 360 energy during the course of a day. That's just the, the energy that comes in over time. We get 240 energy from our free ray refreshes and we will be spending power cores on 
normal campaign energy in the main uh solo event so you're going to be getting that web milestone of 50 energy as well so that gives you 650 energy per day six days of the event is 3900 energy with your 24 alliance members that is going to give you 93600 points and the daily free claim is 800 uh, allied supply six orb fragments again they're at a one-to-one -one, so that is going to give you the bulk of the points at 115,200. let's take a quick look at the web milestone ancient gems here is the table and in this web milestone we are going to be battling in blitz and spending incursion campaign energy there are 12,000 points in total towards the main Diamond Claws event. Uh, that comes in 8,000 straight points and 4,000 Midnight Coalition Orb Fragments. These Midnight Coalition Orb Fragments, uh, they have characters from Alpha Flight in them and Mercs for Money, I believe it is, um, when I looked. So they are some decent little orbs. Your to-do list for the web milestone is to spend your daily incursion energy if you want to and to do four blitz rotations total so if you spend your daily incursion energy all you have to do is four blitz rotations and that'll be the event completely finished and that's based on 52 blitz teams and here is the math for this one so you get a thousand and eight incursion energy over the seven days or 144 energy per day and that leaves you 2,092 points left to get, which gives you the four rotations based on 52 teams. However, what I'm going to do, very simply, I'm just going to do six blitz rotations with the 52 teams. Well, I've actually got more than 52 teams, so I might be able to cut that down by like half a rotation. But I am going to do six blitz rotations, and that will do the web milestone for me. That will be complete day one which will be quite nice and all those points lead into the main event diamond claws if you haven't saved any campaign energy you really should have this event is a big event in it you are going to be spending campaign energy at a two to one ratio you're going to be playing cosmic crucible battles you're going to need to play 18 cosmic crucible battles in total so that is uh six per cosmic crucible trial you're also going to get points for spending power cores um, at five to one. So that is quite good. And I'm just checking whilst we are recording live. Yes. That, so at time of recording, which is 20 past 10, uh, the Shiar's finest orb, the 675 core orb for Gladiator, that is still available in the store. So you could use that to spend some power cores on to get your five points per power core um, there. There is also on the 14th going to be Gore's orb come into the store. So if you have already cored for Gladiator, like I have, um, I did that before the weekend. Um, then Gore is the natural choice, and his orb is going to be out on the 14th of August, which is Wednesday. So that'll be where a lot of my power calls will go, and that'll give me extra points towards this event. And we earn one Midnight Coalition orb fragment, that is a one to one ratio. The reasonable points total for this event is 55,262. Now that is just from spending your general campaign energy with your 450 core refreshes, playing the Cosmic Crucible battles and just using the power cores and the Midnight Coalition orb fragments that you're going to get from the web milestone and from doing your energy refreshes. To-do list. You're going to want to spend at least 200 power cores per day on campaign energy. You're going to want to do your six cosmic crucible battles per trial. That is win, lose, don't drop out of them because that doesn't count. And you're going to want to collect your daily free claim. And that 55,000 gets you down to milestone 14. That is going to get you all the disco balls, the DJ Deadpool mixtape. And that is going to land you with... 90,000 radioactive treats. Now you can get more than this if you have saved campaign energy. 
and also if you are going to call the gore orbs the gore character orbs that will get you further down in the event as well let's take a quick look at the math for this event so we've got twelve thousand points coming from the web milestone we know that we have 15,512 points coming from the campaign energy. We give 450 core refreshes. We have 18,000 points coming from Cosmic Crucible. 1,250 power cores will be spent over those seven days. That will give you 6,250 points. And your daily free claim is 500 Midnight Coalition Orb Fragments, which is going to give you another 3,500 points. But why is it so important to spend your power cores on that on this event? Well, there is a leaderboard. Now, let's not beat around the bush. You are not going to get into the top 1,000, most likely, if you're a free-to-play player, even with spending a obscene amount of power cores. So let's not look at the one diamond old man Logan, but we are looking at those radioactive treats, those T3L1 ions, and those T3 ISO 8 credits, which is going to be so important to getting us into Dark Dimension 8. And anyone will tell you that getting through and getting the Dark Dimension characters as quickly as possible is probably one of the biggest changes to your roster that you will see. So that is why we need to be doing so well in this event. I'm going to be aiming for somewhere in the top two and a half thousand if I can, but these events are very very cutthroat they're very very competitive so we'll see where we end up but hopefully top two and a half thousand would be nice two and a half thousand to five thousand i would also take so the events are fairly simple this week the orcus raids though i mean we're gonna have to wait and see but i think honestly it is only gonna be the kraken alliances that are gonna be in these orcus raids at any point in time early on um, I know my alliance, we haven't really got Bifrost built or Pegasus built. Um, we've got them built just enough to get us through Incursion 2.3, and I would not make anyone in the alliance I'm in, wouldn't even recommend anyone in the alliance I'm in to build their Pegasus or their Bifrost any higher. What do you think about the Orcus raids? What do you think about the events? How did you get it on in Hank Pym's event last week? Let me know all that down in the comments below. Don't forget, if you found this video helpful, please do give it a like and maybe even share it with some of your Alliance mates. And until next time, everyone, stay positive.